Okay, hello and welcome to lecture three, video three. Well, not video three, we've got lots of little videos, but uh, lecture note three of the compiler optimization course. Data flow analysis. Woohoo! This is the first one where we're going to get into some real compiler optimization stuff. Pavlos, you are the internet sensation. Are you excited by this? Is this what you joined up for, is to find out about things like data flow optimization? No. No? All right, fine. I I'm pretty sure my contract doesn't say anything about what we're doing right now. No, you're probably <laughs> right. All right, okay, so uh, let's have a look. So, um, optimizations are often split into two pieces. You have an analysis pass, analysis bit, which goes and works out essentially, is this optimization applicable, and if so, how? And then a transformation bit, which goes and actually makes the changes to it. So, what we're going to be looking at is some analyses. One of the most common types of analysis, analysis is a data flow analysis, which we will go through shortly. Essentially, the idea is that we are going to push. Uh, information around the control flow graph uh, and working out how an abstract execution of the program would be moving values around in order to make an idea of what will happen in the real case. Okay? Mm -hmm. that, and that may not make sense just yet, but it will, I promise it will become clear probably later. So this lecture, we're going to look specifically at a very simple um, data flow analysis for reaching definitions, which I shall explain what they are shortly. And we will look at uh, different algorithms that actually compute data flow. Okay? Exciting? Mm -hmm. Woohoo! <laughs> I wish you could see Pavlis' face. Yeah, this is the least excited face <laughs> that I have ever seen. Excellent. All right, so what is a reaching definition? Do you know what a reaching definition is? Without You can't look at the screen there. You can't look at the screen. What's a reaching definition? Um, so, uh, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. All right. Okay, so essentially, uh, a definition is when you assign something to a variable. All right, so here we see some definitions of A. Right, so there's a definition of A, there's a definition of A, and there is a definition of A, right? Okay, so each of those is a definition. And those definitions reach to other parts of the program. But sometimes they don't reach to the other part of the program. Okay, so can you tell me, Pavlos, where do you think the blue one reaches? Um, it reaches the uh, S5. S5? What? Or not? Do you think it reaches there? No. <laughs> <laughs> there is a... Yeah, okay. <laughs> so A is 2 until uh, S3. Okay, yes. So it reaches here, and it reaches here. Okay, and then this definition shadows it, so that then it no longer... That definition A equals 2 does not reach any further because mm. it's been overwritten by another definition. Yeah? Mm. Yep. Make sense? S5. What were you thinking? <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. So, nil point for uh, Pavlos. All right. Let's see, Pavlos. Can you do it for this definition? For what about the pink one? Yeah. So, uh, it depends on the control path we take. Uh, in the worst case scenario, it's S8. Uh, in the, so, oh yes, okay, so it can come down this path here and make it to S8 there, right? Yeah. Okay, so that would mean that it reaches S4 and it reaches S7 and it reaches S8, all right? Mm -hmm. Anywhere else? Uh, on the other control path, it just uh, reaches S5. It just reaches S5, yes, because down there it stops. So it does not reach here, okay? Mm -hmm. Make sense? Good. All right. Dun, 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 dun. Delete all these guys. What about this green one? This green one. Yeah. Uh, re reach? Yeah. Reads is the S six and S eight. S six and S eight. Yes. Okay. Excellent. So we see that actually we have multiple definitions that reach the same of the same variable that can reach to different points. Okay. You can see how this might be kind of useful because if you want to know whether if you've only got one definition that reaches something, you might be able to just replace it with the thing that it reaches something like this, right? It's a very useful technique for doing stuff like that. Okay, we have up here the uh, specific definition of the thing, which you are expected to <laughs> know. Uh, so that I will read it out just because uh, I don't know we're doing this in audio and uh, we might as well, even though you can read it just as happily yourselves from the text. But the definition of a variable x at a program point d. Oh, what's a program point? I oh, know you haven't explained that. Okay, all right. I'll just wonder with you. Do you know what a program point is? Uh, I don't know. I would guess a statement. No. Wow. So it was so interesting. Although we often think about it as reaching a statement, specifically, really, the, uh, there are points in a program before and after each statement. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, now, often 
it turns out that the things that reach before and after some statement can be the same. And so you can often think about it just reaching a statement, right? But uh, really, a point is specifically here. Now, the reason why this is important is that you may find that uh, that you have something reaching out of here that does not reach into one. Or you may have some things where the things on different edges do different things. OK. Mm -hmm. All right. So they're, they're points that join bits of the control flow graph together. OK. All right. So uh, so a definition of x at point D reaches point U if there exists a control flow path from that uh, path P from D to U such that no definition of X appears on that path, right? In mm -hmm. other words, that no other definition comes and kills it. And that's going to be an important word, right? So we're going to think of the definition being generated and the definition being killed along various paths, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right, let's have a look at the next slide. Oh, it looks like we've... <laughs> It looks like we've done these. Uh, uh, th these I think I did for the for the lectures when we weren't going to have this. So we can see here A reaches these guys down here and these guys here. Uh, that one down down this one as well. Uh, okay, and A there reaches those ones that Pavlos pointed out, uh, and that one reaches those guys. Okay, mm -hmm. exactly. Pavlos, you got it exactly right. Yeah. Well done, you. That PhD was worth it, wasn't it? <laughs> How many years did it take you to get that PhD? I don't know, five, five and a half. Way! And, and it, I didn't even do com compilers during my PhD. <laughs> okay, so we're going to look, Pablos, at, uh, before we get into data flow proper, we are going to look at a local analysis. Now, what does local analysis mean when we talk about compilers? Because you'll see people talking about local optimizations and local analyses throughout compilers. What this means is that we are only going to be considering a single basic block at a time, not the whole uh, control flow. When we talk about the whole control flow, we talk about global analyses. Okay. There is yet a third type, which is inter-procedural uh, optimizations, which go across calls as well. Okay. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to essentially, to work out where these definitions reach, we're going to essentially go through the basic block, uh, interpreting the, uh, sort of abstractly executing the bits of each instruction that are important to what goes on. Okay, so we're not going to do the full execution. We're just going to do the bits that are important for what we're doing. Okay, and as we go, we're going to mark out where these definitions reach. Okay, and this is exactly what you did in your head, right? Is that you did, you weren't actually looking at the bits that were on the right hand side of the uh, expressions that were in that thing. You were looking at the which ones define things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's essentially what we're going to do, and we're going to maintain a set of current reaching definitions. And as we progress through, we're going to change that depending on how each instruction, each node in the in the uh, basic block, uh, changes the current set of reaching definitions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, we'll start at the start node, uh, where there are. In this case, we're going to assume that there are no definitions. Now, obviously, that may not be the case. If you've got a procedure, you may have some definitions coming in. But for, just for the sake of argument, we'll start with no definitions. Go through all the statements from start to end, and we're, the, the abstract interpretation that we are going to do for them is that if it is an assignment statement, then we need to model how that affects the set of reaching definitions. Okay, And essentially, we're going to do what Pablo did in his head, which is to say, if we are defining variable x, and we already have a reaching definition of variable, uh, variable x, then we're going to remove all of those before inserting the new definition that we've got. Okay, So that's what this stuff here formalizes. Okay. Otherwise, if it's not an assignment, uh, then it doesn't change the definition, and we're going to leave it alone. Now, of course, it turns out that there are other weirder ways that you can change variables, right? As you well know, through pointers and weird things like that, uh, that do stuff. But we're going to ignore those for the moment. Okay. So good. Happy with this? Yeah. Happy with the idea of of abstract interpretation? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right, so here's a little basic block with the uh, instructions all split out into individual bits. And you'll see that we have got no reaching definitions coming in to uh, S1. Pavlos, what reaching definitions come out of S1? Uh, we define a1. OK, that's it? Yeah. Yeah? OK, so S1 defines a1. So the reaching definitions that come out of here, the, the things that reach into S2, uh, reach, in this case, reach out of S1 and into S2 is the same thing. So often we just talk about this point, whereas, strictly speaking, you can have a different point here than here. All right? But in the case where there is only one edge, then they're always the same. Mm -hmm. Okay? So uh, what reaches out is A1. What do you think about what reaches uh, S3 from S2? 
What does S2 do to the region's definitions? Um, we also add uh, B. We also add B. Okay, so now we've just added that to the set or, or unioned it with the set. Uh, Should an X be part of uh, the original uh, set? Well, now that is interesting. That is an interesting use of reaching definitions is that we will discover that X was not defined in this okay. case and therefore the whole world will explode and small babies will be um, throwing up in their beds and this kind uh -huh. of stuff, right? Okay. Okay, that's what happens when programs go wrong, isn't it? <laughs> isn't that, where, or is it not that a, an angel dies whenever your program has a bug, something like that? No? I don't know. Anyway, something like that. Uh, so, okay, what comes out of the next one? Uh, we also add C. We also add C. And now what about this one? We replace A1 with A4. Yes, yeah, so, so first of all we take out every definition of A. So you notice I'll put a little subscript here to make them easy to see what they are. But these are, we should note that while they define the same variable, oh, this subscript means it's just to indicate the particular definition, right? It's not defining variable A1, it is defining variable A, but is the A1 definition, is the first definition of it, okay? Make sense? All right, so we take all, if there were A1 and 2, A1 and A2 there, we'd take them both out and we'd replace it with A4. Okay, so there we go. So we say that that defines uh, A4 and kills A1. Okay, or rather kills A1 and then defines A4. Uh, so, okay, so there we've got our new set. What about this one? Uh, we add uh, D. Yep. Okay, and that's it. All right. Mm -hmm. That was nice and easy, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So the problem is, is that control flow makes this stuff a little bit harder. As you've got different things coming in and out of the stuff, uh, you have to work out how the flow across different bits and loops and things like this, how this is going to change it. Okay. So uh, let's consider, we're going to consider reaching definitions, entering and leaving a statement. So we have an in program point and an out program point. As I said earlier, you can sometimes consider those to be the same point because they may be the same, in fact. But uh, when you have multiple edges joining or leaving a node, they can have different edges. They can have different information coming in and out of them. Okay. And actually, it turns out that with some data flow things, you may actually have uh, things specifically on each end of an edge, and you have more than one edge per, per node. But we'll do it because you can have exceptional edges and all sorts of things. Yeah, we'll deal with that later. Right. Okay. So the root is a special start node, and we're going to try the previous approach and uh, see if that works. Yeah? Happy with that? Yep. All right, so here's a control flow graph. You happy with control flow graphs? Control flow graphs? Oh, happy. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, <clears throat> so um, you'll notice that I've got little little sexy blue bits and little sexy red bits for the to, to indicate in and out. Uh, and uh, let's see what happens here. So what have we got coming in, Pablos? Nothing. Nothing. Ooh, uh, hold on. I've Thank done you. Some, I've, done, <laughs> I've done a few bits for you, Pablos. All right, so uh, coming in, we've got nothing uh, there. Uh, and then a this S1 defines A1, so we've got there, and you'll notice that I've done this, you, the, both the in and the out things here are the same. This if defines nothing, so that doesn't change anything, so coming out of there, uh, we've got uh, A1. You notice that that means that that must, uh, at the moment, we know that this must have A1 coming out of it, mm -hmm. right? And that comes into there. And this defines A3, S3 defines A3, so A3 must come out of here. Uh, and that must go into there, right? Yeah. Okay. But, huh, why have I got a problem here? Well, what does go into here? A1. A1 must go into there, but we don't know what else goes into A1, because what about things coming down this edge? Oops. Oh, there is a loop there. Yes, Pavlos, you've rightly pointed out that there is a loop there, and we don't know what comes down this edge, right? Yeah. Okay. So, for the moment, let's, uh, we'll, we'll have a think about that. But you're right to say that we do know that at least A1 must come down here. Hmm. Okay? Yeah, it's, it's the MEA approach, approach. Just put A1 there and we'll see what happens. We'll, that's it. We're going we're gonna to put what we know and we're going to see what happens later. Yeah. Okay? Well, out of here, this one adds B to the set that comes out of there. But now, oh, what happens here? What happens we, on this, this one here? We probably have to merge the sets that are coming out of S3 and S4. Yes. So we're going to merge those guys together, and we're going to notice that we get A1, A3, and B coming out of this case. Mm. All right? And then out of this one, we're adding in C. We don't, uh, don't kill anything. Uh, and out of here, because of this doesn't de define anything, we know that at least this must come out of here. Mm -hmm. all right? Well, if that comes out of there, then it must also come along this edge here. That's supposed to be an arrow. right? <laughs> uh, so that means that that must come back into up here. Yeah. Right? 
Okay, but this now is not what we had. So we have to change this mm -hmm. in order to reflect the fact that we have a bigger set coming in. So let's do that. So that's where we've got a, essentially a conflict in what mm -hmm. we've got. Uh, if we follow that through, then we push that up here. But now this is now wrong. Yeah? Because this should now have B and C coming through it as well, because C does mm -hmm. not get undefined by this. Right? So this is now uh, incorrect. So we can follow that through. But that now makes this wrong. Oh, my God, this is a nightmare, Pablos. Yeah, we'll just add C. OK, so we'll add C to that one as well. Oop, uh, wrong button. There we go. And now it turns out that that one and that one are the same, and everybody is up to date. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Whew. So we did actually work out how to do a control flow of this, but we noticed that we had to make assumptions to start with, push some information around, and then go and fix it up as we went through. Yeah? OK, yeah. we have just done our first data flow. This is exactly how data flow works. Right? Mm -hmm. That doesn't seem that hard, does it? No, it was you, you feel like you do this, right? Yeah, it was like I've done before. <laughs> okay, so let's formalize, formalize our intuition. We've just done this intuitively first, and let's see if we can make this into a piece of uh, sort of rigorous stuff. All right. So we are going to uh, need to simulate statements. So let's work out how to simulate a statement S for reaching definitions in terms of uh, the... We're going to work out how it deals with the outset of reaching definitions in terms of the set of definitions, reaching definitions that come into it. OK, so this is going to be uh, called our uh, transfer function. And it describes how the input gets transformed into an output by each type of statement. Right now, if it is an assignment statement, so we say here, this is a pattern matching thing. So if the Thing, the, to work out the out of a statement S, which happens to be a, uh, a definition, yeah, then what we will do is we will take the input things in them that, that come in, take the input set, we will take out of the input set all previous definitions of the variable that is defined there, okay, and then we will add in the new definition, okay, which is exactly, exactly what we had in our informal way of doing this. We've just written this in a piece of scary looking maths. Right? You hate maths, don't you? Everybody hates Do you hate maths. maths? Everybody hates maths. All right, OK. So that was nice and straightforward, right? Good. OK, but then we also needed to know what we did for multiple edges. Now, we saw this before. What we did when we had multiple edges that merge or meet together is that we are going to essentially union. To work out the, what goes in when they meet, we take all of the things that were out from the source nodes and we union them together. OK, and that was what we were doing when we were coming up with this. OK, this is called a meet function. Uh, and what did we do for when we didn't know what the sets were for each of these guys? We had them all as empty until we put something in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, this is what we did. So if we have these functions, we could now repeatedly go through our thing and we would be able to, to, to this. This is the sort of rigorous stuff that we just did hand waverly before. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah, you like that? It's great. <laughs> Best thing ever. Yeah, but yeah, okay. Cheers, Bumps. All right. Um, and uh, We'll see that normally this is written in a sort of more standard form. Okay, so you say that we do this in terms of what is killed and what is generated. So in minus kill, right? And the kill was the set of definitions that would get killed. Uh, union the set of gen. Now it just turns out that lots of data flow problems have a similar setup to this. So you can often make your life easier to think of it in terms of what is generated and what is killed, and then put them in this way. Okay, so often. We will say we, you'll see things like this, and then uh, things like this got uh, things like this whole this whole thing, and then people separately defining the kill and the gen sets. Okay, mm -hmm. actually, they not only do that in t for for writing the maths, but it turns out that often you pre-compute the kill and the gen sets for each statement so that you don't have to do it again and again as you come through. Right? Okay. Oh, you will find if you look at this in the book, by the way, that instead of doing it like this. Uh, they m merge, instead of doing this as two equations, working out out in terms of in and then in in terms of out, in the book it does it in one single equation. Now, I personally find it quite difficult to handle all of that stuff in my head, so I personally split them out into two things, and, and I think it's an easier way to do it. So I'm going to show a slightly different variation from what the book does, but it actually turns out to, to compute the same things. But this is just so you are aware. 
I think part of the reason for this is that in the book they don't deal with more complicated control flow. When you have different exceptional edges and things like this, as you do in Java, where the things that are pushed, the information that's pushed down an exceptional an, an error edge are different from the things that are pushed down a normal edge, then life gets a little bit more hairy. And I prefer to do it like this anyway, because I think if you do real data flow, you find that this is easier. Okay. So um, the analysis defines properties at various points in the program, and it uses recurring stuff, so you have to define things in terms of themselves. Uh, we assume that you have a control flow graph, and we start with a conservative approximation, which in this case was there are no reaching definitions, and you build up in one direction, okay, refining the approximizations, and you stop when there are no further changes. Okay? And in this particular case, for reaching definitions, information flows forward from a statement to its successor. We will see later uh, data flow equations where the information falls the other way. Okay? Mm -hmm. Nice and easy? Okay, great. So that's the end of this lecture. Woohoo! Yay!